smoked. High and deep to left field, and that ball is long gone. What a way to start things off for Loper Fido and the two Blue Devils. My, 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 how you start off a game for the Duke Blue Devils, their senior, Joey Loperfido, absolutely hammers this pitch to left field. You got to barrel one if you're going to get it over the porch in any part. This ball is socked left field. Again going up, oh, again Loperfido with a bomb. Have yourself a day, Joey Loper Fido, two for two with a pair of home runs. Welcome to the special Jersey baseball show with uh, today's guest, Joey Loperfito. We have the chance to talk with one of the uh, top players in college baseball last year, MVP of the ACC tournament, brought the, uh, the ACC title to Duke for the first time in 60 years, first time ever winning the ACC baseball tournament. That's how long it had been. Um, draft choice, seventh round draft choice of the Houston Astros. Incredible 2021 South Jersey pride of uh, Haddonfield and uh, and back for for at least part of the winter working down at BPC. Thank you for uh, thank you for coming on, Joey, first of all. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's just begin. I mean, I, I know it's probably no way to put 2021 into a few minutes, but accomplishing the ACC championship at, at Duke, you know, it was a a program that was on the rise when you committed from uh, Haddonfield High School back in uh, 2017 was senior year, right? Yep. Um, so the program that had just begun, I think, made the NCAA tournament for the first time in a long time. But but to think of what you accomplished in your time there, you and your other group of uh, uh, seniors, um, pretty special, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely special. And obviously, you know, at this point, kind of looking back on where the program was when my class got to campus versus where we kind of left it um, after this past season. It's, it's special. And I think really for any college player to leave a program better than you found it is, you know, really all you can ask for um, and to do it at a place like Duke with, you know, the staff and the the teammates that I was fortunate enough to have. It was really awesome. Um, I don't think I could ask for a better, better four years of school. No, no. And, and, and three years of baseball, right. And we don't count 2020 as much of, of, of anything. But three for three NCAA tournaments. And, and the other thing that was, I guess, twice a game away from, uh, from the ultimate, right, going to Omaha. Um, but, you know, to do it at three different positions, right? First base, starting at first, starting at second, starting in center, right? You're always kind of that Swiss Army knife. But, you know, that in itself, I mean, that's a, a, a something that I can't imagine happens very often. No, and it was cool. It was kind of a, you know, different approach to every season. Um... I mean, I would have to say I like center field the best, but, you know, any way you can work your way into a lineup your freshman year, you're definitely going to do it um, and then get a chance to play infield, which is, you know, where I played pretty much all throughout high school, my sophomore year, um, and then kind of transitioning into the outfield where, you know, I see myself um, as a professional player. Um, it was fun. And, you know, credit to Coach Dean at, at Duke to really embracing those positional changes with me, and we, we had a good time with it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, just to that, that final ACC weekend, right? I mean, you, you, senior captain, um, team that starts slow, kind of met, works their way up throughout the whole year. You know, you had the, the big blow up game yourself against uh, Virginia. I'm sure something you'll remember for forever. Um, but to, to beat those four teams in a row, you know, you got the, the all time historic Miami and, uh, and Florida State. and then two teams that made it to the World Series, beat them back to back, Virginia and NC State. You know, it's got to be something that you'll remember forever. Yeah, you know, obviously the goal was to to make it to that World Series, but I think if you know you're not going to accomplish that, I think winning the ACC championship and having that uh, week of baseball, it everything just kind of clicked for us, and 
you know, credit to the guys. We knew things would eventually kind of come together for us, but you can only say that for so long until you're, you know, pretty much done with April and, you know, you have to kind of win out in your ACC slate and that's pretty much what we did. So it was really cool and obviously a great kind of culmination to the, to the regular season. And you know, it was a great way to end uh, what was a historic year for Duke, I think in 2021. Oh yeah, for sure. And then now, uh, so you actually get it done. You win it, right? That what's you know you, you said you were going to be a dangerous team. You won. You went and won the uh, won the tournament for the first time ever. Um, what was that like emotionally for for you and and the other guys in the class? You know that that moment. You know on the field of of it. It's done. We 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 just won the ACC title. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a one nothing game, and NC State had a pretty pretty elite lineup that year. Um, yeah. So I, when we didn't even really play many one, I don't know if we played another one run game like that the whole year, really. Um, but to beat a team like that, one nothing um, in a championship game. And, you know, that place was packed and the NC State always travels well. So their fans showed up. But, you know, Duke Duke is starting to draw bigger crowds now, too. Um, and our fans showed up as well. So it was just exhilarating. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to have, I think, three or four kind of dog piles like that uh, throughout my career, but those are kind of what makes everything worth it. And, you know, all those days in the fall and in the winter that you're kind of grinding with the team and, and what you're working for, it's, it's all for those kind of moments. So it was really special. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so you get that championship, the NCAA tournament's a little bit shorter than, than maybe you would hope, but I mean, reality is it's kind of hard to sustain something like that with, uh, you know, for that long, um, in, in, in baseball, but then you guys, you, you do something special after graduation and, and you and, and, and your roommate, uh, Mike Rothenberg. And I believe it was, I, I don't remember it. I'm blank. Will Hoyle. Will. Okay. Yeah. Will. Yeah. Uh, and, and you guys go on a, uh, a little road trip after that. So tell us a little bit about that, that experience, because it's something that everybody says they're going to do when they graduate, but yeah. very few actually do. Yeah, that was kind of something we talked about. Um, honestly, just when the season was going, you know, so terrible. I mean, we had a rough stretch kind of uh, there in March and early April. Um, in you know, fortunately enough, we were able to turn things around. But that was kind of a good way for us to just kind of have something that, you know, we could come together after the season um, and just kind of do for ourselves just because, you know, college baseball are pretty much going year round. Um, and I lived with Mike for the past four years, um, and Will lived across the hall from us. Um, so to get to drive, you know, we started in Durham, uh, worked our way, I think as far west as San Francisco or Napa Valley, and then to make it back, it was really fun. Um, and those are, you know, memories I've made with those guys that, you know, we'll never forget. Um, so it was a blast. It took us about two weeks, two and a half weeks to get out there, and then we actually went straight from Denver back to Durham in one in one shot. We didn't we didn't stop. We just wanted to uh, to get back. So it was a lot of fun. And the rig, right? That was your your dad's truck. The rig. Yep, it is in my driveway as we speak, um, <laughs> and it's kind of like my dad, one of my dad's company's trucks. Excellent. So so right from there, I guess when you got back, it was it was draft prep mode, right? I mean, it couldn't have been that. The timing could have been maybe a week or two, I guess between that and the, and the draft. Yeah. I just had kind of a couple of weeks to, to get myself back into, into the swing of things. Um, and was working out at BB, BBC, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it was kind of just right back into, into go mode, honestly. Uh, yeah. Not much time, not much of a break. Yeah. Now, now I guess by that point, you were pretty sure, you know, consensus that day two was going to be your your draft day, right? I mean, it, it, you, so I guess that's somewhere between like three and ten at that point, right? Somewhere in that that range. Um, how was that day for you? You know, when did you realize it was going to be Houston making the pick, and 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 just anything that you can now, you know, three four months later, kind of look back on and uh, you know remember your draft day by. Yeah, I mean, draft day is always stressful. I think anybody that tells you that there's not a little bit of stress associated with it, unless you're, you know, a lock of a first round pick. Um, it's stressful. And going through the 2020 draft, you know, where I thought I was getting picked in those five rounds and it not really working out. Um, 
you know, I think it really just all comes down to, to numbers. Um, I think, especially with this year's draft, a lot of teams are trying to get uh, some of the older players, uh, kind of some underslot deals. Um, so it kind of started early in the day, just different teams reaching out. Uh, hey, would you take this? Would you take that? Um, so it was mainly just kind of fielding those calls and working with my advisor to, you know, ultimately find the best fit um, for both parties. So he talked with him on the phone and maybe the fifth or sixth round. And he said, Hey, I think it's going to be Houston. And that was that. Yes. And, and at that time that we're doing this, of course, by the time it airs, it won't be, but, but you were picked by one of the two teams that are still playing at this point, which is, uh, you know, I, I know you're a big Eagles, obviously, and, and, and Philly's fan being from South Jersey, but, you know, I, I guess it's not too hard to slide Houston into that. And it's pretty cool to have your organization be in the World Series, I would imagine, in year one. Yeah, Houston gained a lot of fans, I think, from the South Jersey area. A lot of, a lot of low profito fans, for sure. Um, and a lot of, you know, people that followed my career at Duke are, are now definitely pulling for the Astros a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so you get through that, that period of uh, draft. You go through your workouts. Uh, and I guess we should take a, a little pause here because that day, those first couple of days, that was such a crazy and special time for South Jersey itself with uh, with Chase, uh, Patty, and Anthony Salmetto. And, you know, I think it were nine guys taken in the first 10 rounds from New Jersey in general. Um, I know you believe in the, the concept of South Jersey tough. Um, and, uh, you know, what did growing up in this part of the country and, and, and playing ball here and, you know, playing in that kind of special environment, what have you taken from that, you know, into your Duke career and now into your professional career? Yeah, I mean, I think South Jersey, for one, is just a place where with a lot of work ethic, um, you know, I think there's a lot of a lot of towns and a lot of people in South Jersey that, you know, really take pride in working for what they have. and think that carries over into sports you can obviously see it in in Philadelphia and the Philadelphia uh, fan base and those sports teams but uh, it's a tough place I mean there are a lot of really tough people here um, you know I would say from a baseball perspective um, growing up as a kid watching guys like Chase Utley and uh, the other guys from that 08 Phillies team um, you can see it it bleeds into into the culture of the teams um, so I think just playing kind of a hard-nosed brand of baseball has always been something that, you know, I kind of grew up doing. Um, so it's cool. And, you know, when you see other South Jersey guys, um, I'm actually working out with Nick Decker with the Red Sox um, a lot this offseason. Just like when you cross paths with other guys from South Jersey, you know, it's like a little, I don't know, you have a special place in your heart for That's people, that, you know, yeah. yeah, come from the same area as you. So it's cool. Yeah. So, so from, so you get drafted. Take us through that kind of couple week, I guess, process of working out at the facility and your first pro experience. And, you know, obviously the numbers weren't what you would have wanted your first pro year, but still it's such a crazy season that you're, you know, back home. What are some of the things that you're working on that you learned along the way that are going to, you know, pay off in 2022? Yeah, so we were at the Astros complex where I signed my contract for about two weeks, just kind of getting in the swing of things and they put us through a little bit of a, you know, throwing and hitting progression uh, before they sent us out to Fayetteville where their low A affiliate is. Um, but it was cool. I mean, it was, went through, you know, obviously like a honeymoon phase of things where just everything you're doing is, doesn't seem real. And you just, you know, really, really, really excited um, to get after it every day. And honestly, that kind of lasted through the, the whole stint this past summer, even though, you know, I obviously didn't play the way I would have wanted. Um, and you know, your first pro game, I just, I don't know, I haven't been, you know, that wound up or nervous for a game in a long time. So, um, it was cool. My family was able to be there and, uh, a lot of important people in my life were at that first game where I got my first hit. So it was a ton of fun. Um, and then unfortunately later that week, I tested positive for COVID. So I missed, uh, about three weeks. Um, I had to fly to Houston to get my heart cleared and, you know, before I could return to play. Um, but I would say I definitely learned more in that kind of month of playing, um, you know, than I have really ever in my career. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I've struggled like that ever before. And you kind of come out the other end of it 
a tougher player and I think ultimately a better player. Um, and to go through those struggles, I think, at the beginning of your career um, is far more advantageous than going through it in year two or year three when, you know, really your, your clock's running out. So, um, and right from kind of right from that uh, season, we transitioned directly into Instructs, which was nice to try and just channel, you know, that motivation to get after it this off season into making some adjustments. Um, and that's really what Instructs is all about. It's a lot of individualized work, uh, a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with uh, the player development staff with Houston down in Florida. So it was great. I took a little bit of time off to start the off season, but I'm not somebody that takes a, a lot of time off uh, in general, but kind of forcing yourself to take a step back and relax a little bit was definitely something I had to do. Yeah. So, so life in Fayetteville, I'm, I'm guessing the first time you spent extended time in Arkansas. Um, no, we were in North Carolina. We weren't that oh, far from Duke, actually. Okay, okay. That, that, better, better, I would say. Um, but, you know, still, I guess, really, you're, you're, so your first pro, your first camp experience. Um, any pro story that's repeatable uh, for, for the air here um, that, you know, that, that was uh, – give give guys give everybody back home a, a, a kind of an idea of what it's like um i mean fayetteville gets a lot of fans so we there's a uh, fort Braggs in fayetteville so you get a lot of a lot of military personnel coming to the games on the weekends um and they would certainly bring the passion um but i don't know i mean our locker room was definitely you know sort of a melting pot you have a lot of guys from a lot of different places we had players from brazil venezuela the dominican republic um, so it was really cool to get to, you know, be in a locker room that was so diverse. Um, people speaking Portuguese, Spanish, uh, English. I mean, it was, I definitely got to work on my Spanish, uh, while I was down there, but, um, what stands out honestly is just the music, just the, how loud some of the, the Spanish music and the Latin music would be playing at just early hours uh, of the morning. Um, in the locker room but no it's fun it's a different environment and obviously you know not uh, all organizations prioritize winning as much as I think player development in the minor leagues but at the end of the day you know when you win a game with a walk-off hit or something on Saturday night the clubhouse is definitely going to have some music playing when you come back into it and it's it's fun it's a good time yeah yeah so a lot of work at BPC again now right and at this point in the offseason you're back in the in the get on the grind pretty, pretty strongly, I guess. Um, give it, give them a little shout out here as, as how instrumental they've been for you kind of along the way. Yeah, no, working with Ed at PBC has been great. Um, we made a couple adjustments going into my senior year at Duke. Uh, we added kind of a, a toe tap type load that I thought, you know, helped me get into a really good hitting position. Um, and kind of after this stint of pro ball, we've, really working on getting into my back hip, um, kind of simplifying everything and limiting my head movement just to ultimately give me a chance to be in the zone with my bat as early as possible and just stay in it and be able to repeat that as much as possible. So I think really the difference is, you know, when the quality of pitching is elevated, you just have, you know, less margin for error. So you just got to be as repeatable, as simple, um, and as efficient as possible with all your moves. So that's really what we're working on right now. Definitely, definitely here with Joey Love Perfido. Um, and just uh, graduated from Duke a, a couple of uh, months ago and um, ACC tournament MVP 2021, seventh round draft choice of the Houston Astros, um, but also graduate of uh, Haddonfield High School, um, 2017 graduate. So while this is when this runs for the first time, it'll be right in the middle of our generation next series with. Uh, you know, high school guys, a lot of the stars in, in not just South Jersey, but through the whole state. So, you know, a lot of guys getting ready for their senior year, kind of the same position you were in five years ago. Um, what's one thing, you know, now that you've kind of been through it, Power Five, MVP, conference tournament, second team all conference, draft choice, pro little start in your, your own pro career. What's one thing that you would want to say to these guys who are getting ready for their senior year of high school? just say to enjoy it I think for me um, you know going through the process in high school where things happened a little bit early after my sophomore year with the decision to commit to Duke um, I would just say that 
you know, when you put in the work and you invest in yourself as much as a lot of players do these days, um, ultimately good things are going to happen. Um, and I think just kind of stay in the course. Um, for me, at least, Duke was kind of a no-brainer. Um, I mean, academically, it was a school that, you know, I dreamed of going to. And from a baseball perspective, it was a place where I felt like I could play and where I could contribute early in my career. And so I feel like it's easy for a lot of guys at high school to want to commit to, you know, these big Dave schools. But anywhere you can play and anywhere you can contribute early in your career, um, in a place where you feel at home and, you know, you trust the people there, uh, that's really just what it comes down to. Um, and I talked about this a little bit and I gave a speech at our, our first pitch banquet at Duke, but kind of at the end of the day, you remember a lot less the numbers and the stats and the two for four games and all that stuff. And you remember more so the experiences that you have with your teammates um, and kind of the little moments along the way. So I think just not losing sight of that stuff and kind of keeping a good perspective through it all. It's so easy to focus on the, on the micro of, of everything, right? Yeah, it is. And I think, you know, for a lot of kids, it's like, oh, all I have to do is commit to this D1 school and, you know, everything's going to be perfect. Or all I have to do is get drafted and everything's going to be perfect. And the reality is, I mean, it's awesome. And it's, you know, what you dream of and a bunch of great moments put together. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, no different than where you are. You're no different as a person than where you are kind of where you're at right now. So I would advise those guys not to kind of get tunnel vision or what Coach Power at Duke would call destination-itis just because there really is no destination. You know, once you're there, you want to get to the big leagues. Once you're in the big leagues, you want to be a Hall of Famer. I mean, it never ends. So just enjoy it. Yeah. Um, side question here. Duke basketball. What are those home games like, like Duke, North Carolina, some of the other ACC games? Yeah. I mean, when Zion – I was at a game where Zion really threw one down one time, and, I mean, the floor shakes. He was, uh, he was an incredible player to get to watch in person. Um, and it's fun. I mean, it's a much smaller arena, I think, that people think if you haven't been there. Yeah. So you're you're really in the student section. You're really close to the action. So it's a ton of fun. And I wish, you know, I probably went to half a dozen, a dozen games, but I wish I went to a lot more. So. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh, um, Philly sports fan, you said, uh, obviously, Phillies and Eagles more than more than the other sports. But but what's uh, what can the what do the Eagles need to do to get back uh, back to the Super Bowl? Ooh, it's a loaded question, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I think what I remember most from that Super Bowl team is just you could see, you know, the culture. You could see just the buy in from everybody. And that yeah. kind of bled into, you know, a certain ferociousness on the field so um you know I have faith in the the veteran players in that locker room that they'll kind of take ownership of that and that's kind of what the best teams always do they kind of rely on their culture and they rely on their people so I think you know a couple guys will step up and they'll kind of figure things out down this home stretch definitely look back on Haddonfield High School those days um what do you remember you know four or five years later um, yeah, I guess you kind of mentioned it, it's just kind of the experiences of it rather than the individual games, but you know, what, what are some of the things you're going to take away from, from your South Jersey youth? Uh, yeah, I think the games were awesome. I mean, for me, getting to play as a sophomore, um, you know, it felt like I was playing in the big leagues then. I mean, I was only like 14 or 15 and these were like 17 and 18 year olds. So you kind of go through these stages, I think, as a player where you're at a new level, whether it's varsity or JV in high school, um, and you kind of prove to yourself that you can play there, and then you move up, and then you kind of prove to yourself that you can play there, and then you show up to college, and you kind of show yourself that you can play there. Um, and I think the, you know, importance behind that is just as you show yourself what you can do, it becomes less and less like a, a cap that you can put on yourself. Um, so I think just not limiting kind of your potential and just knowing that, you know, if you work hard and make the right decisions, a lot of good things will happen. So it was cool. Um, I wish we got to win a sectional championship while I was there. That would have been a lot of fun, but I'm happy Coach Pickle and then finally got one a couple years ago. So Definitely. Um, first spring training coming up in a few months. You know, somebody who's obviously, uh, you know, had that as, as a dream for, for a long time, for sure. You know, what's, what are the goals heading into there and what's that excitement level for, 
you know, it's obviously not major league spring training yet, but it still is spring training baseball. And, and, and what are the, you know, what's the excitement level? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be super pumped. Um, I think this off season, what's important is to put, you know, as much time into the mental side of things that you do into the physical. So obviously going into spring training, I want uh, my body will be in a place where I want it to be um, feeling very good. And then I think mentally just kind of knowing and part of why I'm so gracious for this first month in Pro Bowl that I got um, this past summer is just you kind of know a little bit more what to expect. Um, so I think just kind of building more of this that bulletproof mentality going into spring training. Um, so when those tough times do eventually come, because in this game, they're, they're always going to be there. Um, you're a little bit more prepared. You're a little bit more ready to, to make them last as short as possible. If Willie Mays can start his career 0 for 20, then then anybody can slump. Obviously, it's uh, yeah. You can say that, but what's something that you've learned along the way? Obviously, like I said, probably or as you said, the the first time you really ever struggled, um, you know, coming back uh, from from COVID last year in your first month in the pros. But what are some of the things that that you've kind of learned that that you could tell somebody in in high school that that hasn't had that you know yet? That, that they could do to kind of internalize that and, and kind of move forward and, and, and realize that's not the player that they are and, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think the first thing for me, at least, that went was just my concern for, you know, the outcomes of things I couldn't control. Um, I mean, you put a really good swing on a ball, you hit it 110 miles an hour, line out to the center field, or, um, you know, it just goes down in the book as 0 for 1. Um, and I think it's very easily – to let those outcomes kind of get in your head and be, oh, I'm over one. I got to get it this next to bad. I got to do this. I got to do that. And I think the reality is the more uh, you kind of focus on those outcomes, the less focused you are uh, at the task at hand. Um, and so for me, it was really just trying to go back to solidifying, you know, my process of what I do every day to put myself in the best position to be successful in the games. And then once that game starts, just kind of trying to compete as best I can and kind of do whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, and kind of let the outcomes handle themselves. Yeah, that devotion to to process over everything else. Is, you know, if there's a constant or consistent factor among guys who've gotten to that level, you know, it just seems like they grasp that and they do that, and that's 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 their way, and they and they're ready. Um, yep. But I, I uh, again very much appreciate you taking the time to uh, to connect with us here. Um, I know that it's. Uh, Great to see you having the success that you you have. Certainly a lot of fans, obviously, still in South Jersey. And uh, as you said, more Astros fans than probably ever before. And we hope that it's not too long until, uh, you know, we can hide that for now until uh, until you get to the, to the, you know, there's going to be a point, hopefully, that we can't or that you get traded back home or something. But, you know, certainly wish you the best and get that next step in along the way. And, uh, yeah, congratulations for a uh, an incredible run at Duke and an amazing 2021. And like I said, thank you for uh, for sharing some time with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Always awesome. happy to do it.